Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Yusef Dunbar and this is Big Discussions 76 Sports. First of all, please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. Well hey guys, I just wanted to get in and make a short reaction video to last night's thriller out uh, in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, as you know, uh, the Michigan Wolverines uh, triumphed 32-29, um, which was pretty much in line with the, uh, the pre-game point spread. So I just wanted to come on and say a few words about that. Uh, I'm honestly surprised that uh, Jimbo and the Maize and Blue got out of there with that victory, but I am happy that they did nonetheless. Um, yeah, so let's, let's jump in. So I think I'm going to start with uh, something I forgot to mention in my pre-game video and that's the history uh, between our two programs, the Maize and Blue and the Big Red. Uh, and actually, while we've classically played in two different conferences up until Nebraska came over, uh, the um, ABC did a good job pointing out that the, uh, the 1997 uh, National Championship um, disagreement, there was a huge controversy back in 1997 when Lloyd Carr's team went um, undefeated and then Tom Osborne's team went undefeated uh, and I think that, uh, that there were um, uh, I think that it, that had ramifications for the Heisman Trophy race that year which Charles Woodson won but anyway they, they did a good job uh, reminding us of that and also the fact that uh, both Jim Harbaugh and Scott Frost uh, had very very um, good relationships with their former head coaches Bo Beckler and uh, uh, Tom Osborne, who was in attendance last night. But I'm going to start with that. Now, let's talk about the game and what actually happened in the game and what my thoughts uh, on the game were. So guys, as I mentioned, I wasn't sure if the Wolverines would get out of Lincoln with that W, but they did, and I'm glad that they did. And I'm just going to briefly go over uh, what I saw and some of the key statistics. So the final score was 32-29. Again, that was consistent with what um, was predicted in terms of the, the pre-game spread and the odds. Uh, Michigan, uh, the, neither team scored in the first quarter. Uh, even though Michigan seemed to be, to be moving the ball and Nebraska was having some success running the ball as well. Michigan won the second quarter 13 zip. Uh, Nebraska came out and exploded in the third quarter uh, 22 6. And Michigan won the fourth quarter 13 7 for the final um, score of 32 29. I'm just going to go over some of the stats here. Um, and before I talk about this, I thought that the way Michigan was moving the ball in the first half, I thought that if we could have gone up by two to three touchdowns going into halftime, then we could have cruised the rest of the game. But as you know, that didn't happen. Um, the keys to Michigan winning that game and staying in that game in that hostile environment where we seldom win, I thought uh, one of the keys was taking shots down the field, uh, not just to the wide receivers, but also to the tight ends. I was happy to see Eric All catch some balls, and I think that that was a key to them pulling that out. And I think that they need to continue uh, going forward. They need to continue spreading the ball out and being creative and just hitting multiple receivers. Um, I thought that in terms of the running game, they were consistently winning at the point of attack. And they were consistently able to move that Nebraska front seven our offensive line when we weren't false starting and doing things like that, but also uh, the running backs, Hassan Haskins and Blake Corum, who had uh, good games themselves. The defense, the defense played well. Uh, they had a hard time stopping Taylor Martinez. He was a dual threat. He could run and pass the ball. And, you know, just some of those plays when our defense got in the backfield, you know, there were plays where you would hope that the defense would take him down but I gotta give the kid credit, he's talented. He, he could throw it and he can run it. Um, and But there were some gutsy um, plays that were made by the defense, especially in that second half. Um, um, there were some tackles missed, but there were some gutsy plays made like the, uh, the game clincher 
by none other than uh, number two, Brad Hawkins. So I think he can go ahead and wear that number two now. I think based upon that game, I think Brad Hawkins has earned the right to wear the Charles uh, Woodson uh, number two. And it was good to see Jim, uh, uh, it was good to see Jimbo composed, but also fighting for his team, fighting for uh, that Hassan Haskins first down and uh, fighting to get the refs to take another look at it. It was good to see that Jim back, but composed and under control. Um, so I'm just gonna read over some of the stats here. Cade McNamara went 22 for 38 for 255 yards. Uh, JJ McCarthy went 0 for 1 for um, no, no uh, passing yards, no completions. Uh, in terms of rushing, Hassan Haskins carried the ball 21 times for 123 yards. Uh, Blake Corum carried the ball 13 times for 89 yards. So we got really, really good production out of our running game. Uh, as I described, uh, we got um, good production from our skill position players, our wide receivers, and our tight ends. And if you look at the stats, at least on Google, if you go to ESPN2, you'll see that there was production by multiple players. Um, Dalen Baldwin, Cornelius Johnson on the outside, and, and Shoemaker and uh, Eric All on the inside. And I think continuing to target those tight ends, big targets like uh, Eric All and Shoemaker, I think that's going to be key going forward uh, if the Wolverines are, are going to continue this march um, through the Big Ten and potentially, potentially to a Big Ten East Division title. Potentially. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But yeah, it was, it was great all around. Uh, the defense, Aiden Hutchinson was putting pressure on um, the Taylor, uh, not Taylor Martinez, Adrian Martinez. Uh, they had two quarterbacks named Martinez. Uh, Taylor was a couple years ago and Adrian was uh, last night. Uh, but everybody was making plays. Aiden, um, Daxton Hill, uh, David Ojobu, Ajabo, uh, Brad Hawkins, uh, Vincent Gray made some plays. Um, so we got really, really good production. And Mike McDonald, uh, even though uh, Adrian Martinez was a handful to game plan for, uh, they they made some plays. The coaches can do what they can do. They can scheme and they can um, come up with the most exotic blitzes and, and coverages. But um, on both sides of the ball, eventually, eventually the players have to make plays. And they did that last night. So in terms of Nebraska, uh, I think a Adrian... Adrian Martinez kept them in that game. Um, he gashed us with runs and throws uh, at times when I thought that he was going to get sacked. Uh, the kid uh, has talent. The kid uh, played his heart out. And I'm going to say as a Michigan fan, I'm an understanding fan for other fan bases. I do feel a little bit bad for uh, Adrian Martinez and Scott Frost uh, and that Nebraska team because they played well enough to win. but. Um, our team did not give up on the road, and uh, again, Brad Hawkins made that gutsy play uh, to rip the ball from Adrian Martinez um, at the end. Oh, let me also acknowledge Jake Moody. Jake Moody was clutch um, in the kicking game. That game would not have gotten won. We would not have left Nebraska uh, with that W had it not been for the kicking of Jake Moody. So, it was, it, was a, it was a chippy game, guys. There were close calls, there were missed calls, there were uh, clutch plays, there were um, uh, nice throws. Cade McNamara threw his first interception ever for the Maze and Blue. Uh, there was just a little bit of everything, but the Wolverines stayed poised and they were able to get out of there with the win. So, um, Michigan uh, can go into this bye feeling very, very good. They're still going to be ranked in the top 10. Whoever, how many of us thought that this Wolverine team this year coming off last season would be ranked in the top 10? But it, it seems as though they belong there. Uh, and whether or not they will stay there remains to be seen. Um, Cade's words. If you watched the end of the broadcast last night, Cade McNamara said something very, very interesting when he was interviewed. He said, Something to the effect that I don't want to throw shade at the previous Michigan football teams, specifically under Coach Harbaugh's tenure, but this team doesn't give up. This team continues to fight. So that was very interesting, and I hope none of the former players uh, take offense to that. Um, I hope Kay continues doing what he's doing. Um, I don't know if we're going to have a, uh, a Drew Henson, Tom Brady thing. 
uh, where Jim is going to feel the need to play both quarterbacks. So keep an eye on that going forward. And um, that was a great win. It was a great win. I, I don't think anyone was certain that the Wolverines would get out there with that W, but they fought hard. They stayed composed. They, uh, the players made plays uh, even when things got tough. So guys, that's all I have to say about this game. Please let me know what you think in the comments section below. Uh, please like, share, and uh, subscribe if you want to throw something in the tip jar. That information is below this video as well. Hey everybody, we don't know how the second half of the season is going to go, but this first half of the season has been very, very exciting. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. Go Blue! And as always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Take care, and I'll talk to you the next time. Good win, Wolverines. It's great to be a Michigan Wolverine. Bye-bye.